Hi there and welcome to another Python video. In this video we're going to take a look at slicing in Python and also we're going to take a look at the itertools.islice function and when you might want to use that. So let's start with the skeleton collab notebook. We have a list A with just some randomly generated numbers and what I want to do is first of all let's take a look at the length of A. We find that it's got eight elements. Now we want to slice this list up. Let's say we want the first two characters. Now Python has this syntax for slicing the list to get the first two characters and this is implicitly starting at zero when you just use the colon. That is how you do that. You get the first two characters of A which is four and two and that will be equivalent to that because of the implicit starting at the beginning of the list. Let's say you wanted to get the first half of the list. You could use the length length function to get the length of the list and then you can floor divide by two and that'll give you the first four elements in the list and that's because remembering that the length of the list is eight so the len of a um if we, if we slice like that it is essentially going to become that because the length is four elements and we're dividing remember we're dividing by two here actually so the length would be eight divided by two that will become um, equivalent to this statement here where we select only the first four elements of the list and you can slice not only from the beginning of a list you can start from let's say the second um, element and we might want to get to the fifth element and that will start at the one and it will give us the next two elements essentially um, slicing is not the, fi the final element is not inclusive so we don't get the fifth element nine here we stop at three which is the fourth element and if we wanted to get the second half of the list if i just go back to what we had here uh, to get the second half of the list we could start from this particular character here and we could just index to the end of the list now again there's an implicit when you use the colon with nothing after it implicitly you're saying go to the end, slice until the end of the list. So that gives us the second half of the list, three, nine, nine, and six. And if we wanted to, we can also use negative indexing. If we wanted to get the last element only, we could use that and that'll give us the final six back. If we wanted to get every element in the list, we can do this and that gives us actually a copy of the list. And that's an important point for the I slice um, later on, which um, sometimes you don't want to be creating copies of very large lists for memory reasons. Um, but in this case, to create a copy, you can use this syntax here, and that's just basically saying, give me, give me all elements that are in that list. If we wanted to get every element except the last one, we can use this syntax, and that will slice off the final six from that list. And Finally, uh, I want to just demonstrate there's also a step size operator. Um, we can do this. Now, two colons means obviously get all elements in the list, but the, the final two um, there means that we want a step size of two in this case. And what that means is we start at four and we skip one element because the step size is two. We go forward two elements to get to one. And then same again, we get to three and finally we get to nine. So that's what's returned there. We're actually skipping over an element each time. And we can start at element one if we wanted to start from two and then we can skip over to get to the final six there. So you can do anything you want as your step size and um, make it three. And we would start at two and we would skip one, two here and we get to three and then finally get to six. You can also do negative um, step sizes and that will basically start from the end of the list. This is a way to reverse a list actually. You start at the end, 6, then you go to 9 and 9 here and basically you've reversed the list. So that's a whirlwind tour of slicing in Python. Now here's the important part, uh, point from a memory consumption view, right? Slices will create a copy and that's fine if you have an element with 8 uh, eight items in it but if you have an element with eight million items then you don't want to be creating a copy of that perhaps in memory because it's just wasteful and you probably don't need always to create a copy of a list so in that case what we do is um, just to demonstrate that if I, if I look at a to from element two to five we've seen that above earlier 
that creates a copy. Um, but you can imagine if you had a huge list, you wanted to go from element 1 million up to element 5 million for whatever reason, that is going to create a copy of 4 million elements essentially in the original list and that can be very wasteful from a memory point of view. Obviously in the list A we don't have a million elements so this is redundant, it's just an example, I'll comment it out. But if you don't want to create that copy then you can use iSlice because what that does is it creates an iterator over items in the provided iterable. What that means is that you provide the list that you want to slice iSlice won't create a copy, it will simply create an, a, an, an iterator which will look one item at a time and give you those elements as you need them. Now what does that mean? Um, let's see an example of iSlice. So if I create a variable called iSlicer and I say itertools.iSlice and we want to, we have this um, original list of numbers which is A. If I want to slice that up, um, we can start at element 0 and uh, let's say we want to get up to element 4. That's the syntax for doing that um, and that will give you back a, I don't think I've imported other tools, my bad. That will give you back an slice object. Now you can create a copy of that by using the list constructor. It's not what you want to do, it defeats the purpose of it but um, in this case we want to see the results and we can get the first four elements by using that syntax. So instead of using the slicing, you know, with the square brackets and the colons, we simply provide keyword, uh, we, we provide arguments to iSlice. The first argument in this case is the start, the second argument is the stop. We can also provide a step as a third argument. So if I do that, we see that we start at four, um, we're going up, skip two here, that's the step and we finish in element 6, there's no more elements 2 ahead of um, 1 in that case so we only get 4 and 1 and I can put in none here what happens is when the stop element is none that means go to the end of the list so in that case we start at the very beginning we go to the end of the list and we skip 2 each time so that's what iSlice does and that's very useful if you need to do something with those elements so for let's say for element in iSlicer and this will yield one element at a time. We can print the element out and we, are, we haven't created any copies here. We can square the element and that will give us a, the element squared but we haven't actually done any copying of the original list A. It's all being done through generators essentially which is very useful. And finally I just want to show something that iSlice can do that, um, that normal slicing cannot do. The normal slicing only works with sequences, lists and strings and things like that. It doesn't work with sets because they're unordered, but it works with tuples, lists and strings. Now, iSlice can also work with iterators, which is, a conf you know, that sounds quite confusing, so let's get a demonstration. Now I'm going to use something called a generator expression here, and that's something that is going to generate square numbers of every number um, between 0 and 9. So for i in range 10, we're going to square every number between 0 and 9 essentially is what that means. And if I look at what that is, it's a generator object. And we can, what you can do with a generator is you can loop over it and you can manifest objects one at a time. In that case we'll get all the square numbers between 0 and 9. Also a generator, you can call the next function on that generator and that will yield values as you call next. So in that case we get 0 for the first one, then we get 1 for 1 squared. 2 squared will be 4, so we expect the next one to be 4. Okay, so a generator allows you to yield values one at a time, but that is a type of um, iterator essentially. Now the itertools.iSlice function allows you to slice this generator, even though it's not like a list where you have everything in memory already, you can actually still slice with the itertools.iSlice function. And in that case, if we manifest the result of that operation, we get starting from element 1, not 0, so basically the second element, uh, 0 in this range, the first element is 0, the second element is 1, so we get 1 squared, then 2 squared, then 3 squared. And so this is demonstrating that you can actually slice an iterator, you can slice a generator um, using the iSlice function, but you cannot do this with normal slicing. 
Um, so I could go to the end of the array from the, the end of the um, generator rather from the first element and we get all the square numbers from 1 to 9. If I start at element 5 we get we're obviously starting at 5 squared there. So you can slice in any way you want. We can also do the step size. Let's say we want the step size to be 2. And um, we get 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared and 8 squared. So the important takeaway from that is that iSlice can actually slice up your generators as well as your normal lists and tuples and strings. So that's quite cool and it's not something that can be done with normal slicing. To demonstrate that very quickly, if I went, to, if I tried to replicate this, I went 2 to the end of the array and step size of 2, that's going to give me a type, er type error because generators are not subscriptable. So just a kind of cool thing to know about iSlice, you can slice up these generator objects. And the main takeaway from the video is if you have a list that you don't want to copy because it's a large list and you don't want to use the memory, then you should look into the itertools.iSlice function. It's very useful for those circumstances. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and learned anything, please subscribe and thank you for watching. Bye.